Welcome to Aljil, everyone. We're at the Varsity Theater, October 23rd, with the very talented Nasr Ranimaz. Welcome to Minnesota. Thank you, Amin. Good to be here, man. And uh, thank you for the spring-like weather today in October. I appreciate that. Last time we spoke, it was on Skype, and uh, it was winter time. It was right before the World Cup in Brazil, and you said it's really cold in Minnesota, so... Just enjoying you coming to some nice warm weather. Now. It was the winter time. It was Brazil. The World Cup was in the summer, though, wasn't it? But it was still cold here. It was. It was in the winter. Well, oh. it's a winter time in, in, in South. America. Pretty much like oh, winter time is South America. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know you're such a worldly, worldly man. <laughs> Mas, tell us about your tour. You're in, in plane tour, so you're going to to Wisconsin after this. You're going to Michigan, Ann Arbor. You're going to be touring, um, I think, Cali in New York, and you have a stop in Amman, Jordan. So I think it's not going. It's not your first time over there. How's that going to be? No, you know, I'm on a tour. Uh, once the spring starts, I'm always touring a lot, and I've been all over. I've been in Florida. I've been in uh, California, and now I'm doing a little tour in the Midwest area. And then, yeah, Amman, Jordan. Uh, as well, uh, I'm all over the place, man. I uh, people can go to my website masjobrani.com. They can see all the dates there. Or I tell people go to Facebook. I have facebook.com backslash masjobrani. Follow me there because I'll tell you. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people will send me a message the week after I was in a town. They'll be like, "When you come into Minneapolis? Yeah, when does the show start?" And I'm like, "I was just there," but they're not following. So you don't know. You gotta follow me, Maz. Talk to us about your upcoming movie about Jimmy Bestwood. It's, it's, it's one of the funniest trailers I've seen. I can't wait for the oh, movie to thanks, come out. Man. And I know that when we were talking on Skype last time, you were in the shoot. So now that it's, I think, either getting over or over for sure and getting released. Yeah. Um, who produced it? Who wrote yeah. it? How did yeah, it? Uh, Jimmy Bestwood is a movie that I made. I co-wrote it with another guy named Amir Ohebsi, and we made it together uh, with a few other producers. It just, uh, it's actually going to premiere in the Austin Film Festival, uh -huh. October, Texas. Yeah, yeah. October 26th, and um, it's basically a comedy, um, I kind of uh, describe it as like the Persian Pink Panther, um, it's a story of an Iranian guy who's obsessed with being an American hero, uh, because he was a big fan of Steve McQueen's back in Iran, and he finally wins the green card lottery to come to America, and he wants to come to America and be a cop like McQueen was in the movie Bullet. But once he gets to Los Angeles, he finds that the best job he can get is working as a security guard at a Persian grocery store. And then in the middle of all that, there's an American guy who sets him up to look like a terrorist. And he's got to prove his innocence and save the world from a potential World War III. Um, so it's a comedy, it's silly, and uh, again, it premieres in Austin. And uh, from there, we uh, hope to get a wider release. People can watch the uh, trailer on YouTube.com backslash Maz Jobrani. You can't miss me. I'm everywhere. If it wasn't for me to give you a job, you would be back home in Iran in prison. Why would I be in prison? Do you think they need to have a reason to put you in prison in Iran? I didn't come to this country to be a security guard. I came to this country to be an American hero. Yeah, like I see my queen. I got my first big case today. Yeah? This big shot American client wants me to follow his wife to see if she's cheating on him. And she is hot. Super duper hot. I'm Jimmy. Jimmy Westwood, like uh, Clint Eastwood, but Westwood. <laughs> he says that if he doesn't get this money, that he's gonna go public with this affair. He wants one million for flinging with your wife? You're married, and you have a boyfriend. JP ever found out about us? You would kill us all. Ah! Jimmy Vasquez is a terrorist! Although we have no idea who he is because all of these people look alike, unconfirmed sources have confirmed he is extremely dangerous and may be intending to perform acts of jihad. I'm never gonna be an American hero like a Steve McQueen. I don't even have good hair. I noticed that you had the, the thick Persian accent in the movie. Uh, when you came, Mama on the Rimi Rimi Amrika, yeah. Mama on the Rimi Rimi Amrika. Yeah. Did that accent gradually change uh, in the movie, or did you keep it consistent? 
You know, I try to keep it consistent, obviously. A few people have said that they thought that my accent moves around a little bit. One of the things is when you're doing some, some, some of these films, you know, the, the film is actually for a wider audience. It's for an American audience, um, a Western audience. So sometimes you've got to be careful. You don't want your accent to be too thick um, because then uh, some people, they, they, they miss it. They don't hear it as well. And the movie, in the very, very beginning, we have a couple of words in Farsi, but the rest of the film is all in English. Like I said, I want, I want a Western audience to go and see a movie and laugh and uh, have the guy who saves the day be of uh, Iranian descent or Middle Eastern descent. So that's the That's goal. awesome. We can't we can, we can wait until it comes out. We have spoken about this next topic before. Uh, you have children, I have children, and, and Iranian parents usually uh, want their kids to become either doctors or lawyers or at the least engineers and you have gone that route uh, I think you were at uh, UCLA doing your PhD and then you just called it quits and uh, you went into acting and into comedy has this been the best decision of your life knowing that you know all the uh, all the steps that came with it yeah absolutely but listen I also don't think that people should think oh you know um, whatever I'm in the middle of, a, of my uh, of my career and I'm not having I'm not enjoying it so I'm gonna drop it all and go be an actor it's not that easy I actually started doing plays when I was 12 years old. So it had been a passion of mine since I was young. So I always tell people, I go, if you have a passion, no matter what it is, whether it's acting or painting or being a doctor or whatever it is, I say pursue that because then you're going to be, the chances of you being successful are higher. And again, there's no guarantees ever. So you really got to do something that you love because, you know, when I first started out, there was no, nobody told me that I will succeed. Um, but, but for me, just doing this was success. Um, even when I had a day job and I was, you know, making nothing doing what I do now, um, it was success. So I do. I encourage people to pursue their dreams. I encourage parents to support their kids, and no matter what that is. And uh, I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm living my hobby, so it's great. You've done stand-up. Obviously, you're known everywhere in the world for stand-up, but you've also done television. You've done movies, and you've worked with some of the greats, uh, Sidney Pollack, and, and uh, who directed uh, the Interpreter with Nicole Kidman and Sean Penn. How is it like to be on the set with such great actors with one Oscars and um, just seeing that happen? Well, you know, I mean, first of all, it's great because you, uh, not just with those guys, but, but I've had a chance to work with people that aren't as well known that are really good as well. Um, but for me, being in a big movie like that was very exciting, it was intimidating because you think, oh my God, like how did I end up here? Um, you, you, you actually, in all honesty, I thought they'd, they'd miscast me. I actually, I wrote a book recently that'll come out in February. It's called, uh, I'm Not a Terrorist, but I've Played One on TV. And, um, but I talk about my experience on that film where I honestly thought that they had maybe miscast me. Um, and then finally I just kind of did what I, you know, I acted and it went well. I, I was happy with it. So it's, it's intimidating, but it's fun, man. It's great. Like I said, I'm living, like you got to pinch yourself. You're living the dream. Speaking on terrorism, it's a very touchy subject, a sad, uh, sad topic, and in the recent days we've seen some uh, bad stuff ha happen in the world, in Canada and everything. How important is comedy uh, in your life? And uh, since you know, you, you've had some um, terrorist um, roles in the past, and people love you, you're funny, and you, you kind of switch that around so quickly that it just becomes funny. With the recent events and with ongoing events, um, sad events like that, how do you uh, switch this topic around so that it's funny and, and let people enjoy it? Well, you know, first of all, early on in my career, I had a couple of parts uh, where uh, I played like a terrorist, and, and I played a terrorist, and, uh, and that's early in your career, you do things, and then I did it a couple of times, and I realized that I really didn't like it. So I told my agents and manager, I said, no more, no more terrorist parts, so I haven't done it anymore. Um, and what I do on stage is I try to make people laugh, um, and, uh, and I think that that counters a lot of the negative press that we see when a person of Middle Eastern or Arab or Muslim descent uh, does something negative. I really think that, you know, I always say that, that, that a majority of people from that part of the world are good people, but we just aren't um, represented as much as we should be. And so I love, when I do my show, it's not just about me, it's about the audience. You'll see my audience is mixed, and I love having people come to the shows that have never been in a show with other people from other places and they see them laughing and they go, oh, wow, you people laugh. And I go, of course. So, uh, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm doing, you know, and it's unfortunate. I, I tend to believe that, um, you know, there's obviously a few movements out there that are trying to terrorize people, but there's also a lot of individual people who do things but unfortunately get categorized with a whole group. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, people that are uh, on the far right start going after just the, anyone who's from that 
looks that way. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing. Yeah. Iranians have a lot of jokes, internal jokes, um, territorial jokes, and growing up in, in, in a Persian family, um, you know, it's, it's somehow part of our, our generation and our lives, comedies at least, you know, or, or laughter. How easy is it to, to make fun of Iranians and also to make fun of others by, you know, being respectful, of course, and as you always say in your interviews, you laugh with them and not at them. Yeah, no, I don't think that I'm making fun of everybody. I, I'm just talking about my experiences, and my experiences are those, some of them are with Iranians, some of them are with Indians, some of them are with black people, white people. So that's what it is. I, I honestly, if anybody ever thinks that I'm making fun of somebody, I think that they're misunderstanding my show. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, if you come to a comedy show, you really gotta have a sense of humor. If you come to a comedy show and you're gonna be offended at everything that's said, then you just don't go to a comedy show. Go to, go see a therapist. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think that no matter where you're from, the idea is come and be open to laughter. My five-year-old tonight wanted to come, absolutely wanted to come, and I, I kept telling her, honey, you can't because children are not allowed, and when she said, why, I said, because uh, there are going to be some bad words there yeah, said yeah. that you're not going to like. Did I, did I do okay, or should I say no, I think No, I no, I think you did well. I, you know, in all honesty, I always say the show is like 13 and older, PG-13, because there's some topics, I, I don't cuss that much. Um, but there's some topics that are more adult topics, so I think it's something, it's not anything that you wouldn't see in a PG-13 movie. But you're right to not bring a five-year-old, because people have brought five-year-olds, right. and the problem becomes then uh, trying to do those, that material with a five-year-old in the audience, and I feel uncomfortable. So, yeah, I always recommend it for 13 and older. Maz, I know it's too, way too early to say, but uh, do you think there's going to be a sequel to Jimmy Westwood? We're working on it, definitely. We're right. working on it, and we hope so. We hope that uh, the sequel comes so the, out. So the Persian Pink Panther is not going to stop at number one. So. No, baby. We're going to keep going, man. Speaking of Jimmy Westwood, we're going to conclude with this. Um, let me get your names straight here. Mr. Jamshid? Yeah. Jamshid. Jam shit. Jam shit. Jam shit. Jam shit. Jam shit. Jam shit. 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 And your last name is Fakhreddin Poo. in the pool. Fakhreddin Poo. Fuck the in the pool. Fakhreddin Poo. Fakhreddin in the pool. Look, you need to do something about those names, okay? It's a little crazy. Okay. Maz, it's so good to Thanks talk to you. It's so Thank good you. to see you in person. Thank and you, have a great show here in Minneapolis. Thanks, and hope man. to talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot, man.